from Clarity Stamp here in the UK. Welcome to another episode of Groovy Tuesday. How are we all doing today? Good morning, Clive. Um, overcast but dry in Swindon. There we go. First in the room, watching via our YouTube page. Um, I can see we've got some people tuning in now, so we'll just wait for a few more people to, to join the chat. And then, um, yeah, and then we'll, we'll get in the groove. I shall waffle for a little bit. I'll have a quick slurp of coffee. There we go. Perfect. So how's everybody this week? Um, there we go. Mo, um, all good, thank you. Yes, I did enjoy the Royal Weekend. Um, coronation Weekend, what weekend it was, wasn't it? Um, we had the Coronation on Saturday here in the UK. And then um, there was the street parties and the concert on Sunday. And um, finally, yes, it was sort of the, the helping out day, wasn't it? Um, good morning, everybody. There's the lovely Pat Hoskins, Sharon, Helen. Um, yeah, it's, um, and then obviously Barb was on TV on Sunday as well from three till five with some fantastic new designs from um, the lovely Jazz. The Calamie pattern design says, Jane, Nahid, good morning. Stuart is in the room. Thank you, Stuart. The sound is good. Um, yeah. Um, I've, that just threw me there. Sorry. <laughs> but it, it's early days for, for this morning. It's only just 10 o'clock. Um, so hope everybody's well. Should we do our normal Tuesday groovy weather forecast? Um, so this morning, it's quite muggy outside. It's quite mild and the sun's shining here in Kent. And um, I've just had a weather warning from the Met Office that there's thunderstorms due about 11 o'clock. So goodness knows whether that'll happen or not. Um, how, what's the weather like with everybody, where everybody else is? Um, Jane's got a bad back, did I see? Jane, let me just flick back up. Uh, suffering with a very bad back. Oh, sorry to hear that, Jane. Um, Sunny and Ripon, North Yorkshire. Grey and Dull with Jane. Good morning, Ken. Um, you're in Cornwall. You're on holiday. Oh, very nice. And what sort of like lovely brightening day in West Cornwall. Good morning, Carol P. From a cold and grey Norway. Oh, no, I hope it's not too cold. Is it? normal for this time of year to be cold in Norway. Um, what sort of temperature have you got there, Ellen? Um, see, this is lovely. We, we go international um, on Facebook and YouTube. It's overcast in Hillingdon, dull in Gloucester. See, this is great. Um, raining with Margaret. Oh, dear. The weather is so unpredictable, isn't it? And, Sadly, I mean, the, the weather in London at the weekend for the coronation um, wasn't very nice, was it? Um, but it didn't deter all the, the celebrations, um, which was nice. But, um, but yeah, so it's dull and grey in Cornwall with Pat, but it's brightening, nice and bright where Ken is, wherever Ken is in Cornwall. Good morning, Lorraine. There we go. Morning all, grandson dropped at school, washing out, ready to watch, now feeling smug. <laughs> nice chill day today. Um, yeah, I think most of the country had um, very nice sunshine on um, Sunday, didn't they? I know when we was driving back from the TV on Sunday afternoon, it was scorching. Had to open the car doors and let some of the heat out before we could start driving. Um, so... Um, yeah, strange weather. And where are we now? We're, we're May already. Goodness me. Where has this year gone already? That's crazy. Um, yeah, May. Goodness. Okay, so it's quite warm in here as well. I should have took this jumper off, but um, I think I'll have to start wearing short sleeve t-shirts on my short sleeve shirts again. Um, but you just can't predict the weather, can you? One of those things. Right, so over the past couple of weeks, we've been looking at these lovely two designs 
Um, so this is a, a Jane Nestorenko rose with a lattice frame, a lovely sentiment top and bottom. And we've also got the, the lattice one. And this one is lovely. Well, they're both lovely, but this is great for infilling different areas, filling frames. Um, just like the plates that Jazz designed um, that Barbara launched on Sunday on Create and Craft. I've got, a, I've got them here, actually. Let me just bring them into those four A6 plates. So we have the, the happy birthday. We've got the thinking of you. Then we have the with love. I'll zoom out a little bit in a moment. And then we have the, the happy Christmas. So let me just zoom out so we can get a real nice shot of those. Let me see which way am I going with the camera. I'm going this way. You think I'd know by now, wouldn't you? Wait, and I still went wrong. Out is that way. There we go. Okay. So we have, I'll just move that up a little bit. The four, these are lovely A6 plates. Um, and they've all got different frames around the outside that Jazz has added to them. So the frames, I mean, this one would be great for practicing your, your white work in the little dots. Um, but you can take the, the plates exactly as they come to create a beautiful piece of artwork. Or you can just use the, the elements to infill frames, backgrounds, um, all different things. And then you have this lovely scripted writing as well. So, I mean, obviously you can turn it that way. You've got, see, happy birthday, thinking of you, happy Christmas, with love. Um, really lovely designs and um, so much versatility. If you're new to Groovy, um, which I know many of you tuning in are, this would be a great place to start. Um, to practice with your coloring, with your white work. Because the, the detail's so small, um, it's easier to achieve. Um, so what's Ellen saying about her weather? Sorry, just didn't In my part of Norway, it's a lot colder, four degrees than normal. And you've had 30 centimeters of snow two days ago. Oh, goodness me. Oh, well, I hope you're wrapping up warm and you're getting groovy. And I'm not even going to pronounce where Ken is in Cornwall, apart from it's between Padstow and Newquay. There we go. Um, so yeah, so if you're new, who's new to um, Groovy Tuesday? Have we got any first timers in the room today? Or just recently found us, um, the Groovy Tuesday or the Shack with Barb? Um, be lovely to, to give you a nice welcome. Um, so yeah, so these are a great, designs if you're new, but even if you've been doing parting for, for many a year, these are lovely um, plates. And um, and if you have a look at Barb's blog from Sunday, you'll see there's a full gallery of using not only the, the groovy plates, but also the different stamps. So we've got the happy birthday stamps, we've got the thinking of you, we've got the with love, and then we've got the happy Christmas. So maybe you're a stamper or maybe you're both. Um, so it, yeah, these are just great for, for sort of like coloring in, whatever you're into, these are fantastic designs. Okay. So I, saw, I know I digressed a little bit there, um, but I think these are, uh, are great for infill because we was talking about infills wasn't we um wasn't we wasn't i um when it comes to um creating frames and these are the plates that we've been looking at over the past couple of weeks and this is a great one for filling in as well so um so how have we got on so far so what we've done we just took the design exactly how it came okay and we traced out the the square panel and we did it in the number one tool on the number two tool and then we added some white work to those dots 
And then last week, what we did, we traced out using the various different tools. I can zoom back in now. Bear with me while I stand up and stretch again. There we go. And um, which way am I coming? I'm coming this way now. There we go. So we're looking at the back of the artwork. And what we did was, do you remember we, we traced out the um, lily of the valley using the very, this was a number one tool, just to show the difference if you're new to it. And this was using the number two tool, if I remember rightly, on those ones. Then we traced the rose and the leaves out of the number two as well. And then we started to introduce a little bit of white work into those areas. Okay, and the, where I got this from was a piece of artwork that Linda Williams created, which was a craft along back in 2019, um, which you can find if you go to the um, Moment of Clarity section on our website, you can go back to 2019, and it was, let me just have a look on my notes, and I've got it written down here somewhere. It was the 17th of September, 2021. Did I say, I, I've thrown myself, was I saying 2019 or 2021? It was 2021. I really struggle with that year. Um, I keep wanting to call it 1921. I don't know. <laughs> oh dear. Welcome, Julia. Purchase the starter kit and you're after some professional advice. Oh, well, <laughs> good luck with that. No, um, welcome to the groovy party. Um, there's loads of episodes that you can go back and, and watch. Um, if you're brand new, um, we started off with the starter kit. Um, when we first started Groovy Tuesday, we're going for all the different designs. Um, if you're on Facebook, then you can always join up to um, our Groovy Worldwide page, and you can always ask questions in there, but you can obviously ask questions here today. Um, and if I don't catch the question, then we've got some of the lovely design team in the room, and Stuart's there as well to help you. So as I've said in the past, no question is ever a silly question if you don't know the answer. So feel free to, to ask away. Okay. So, and then if we turn this over and we look at the back, so this was done on some of our rainbow parchment. So if I put this on the black, let's put it on white so you can see the, the colour. See, but you, this, we're on the back here, but you can't really see if we turn it over. Now you can see the lovely line art. Okay. So what we've been doing is we traced out in the very easy in the number one number two tool to get the different levels of brightness for our designs okay and i thought what we'd do today is we'd add a little bit more white work to where we've already started to add that and then we're going to have a look at some color okay so for today's session what we're going to need is our piece of artwork we've been working on we're going to need our number one, two, three, and four groovy tools from the starter kit. We're going to need our A4 black mat, and we're going to look at the soft side from the white work. We're then going to need our groovy guard to protect our work whilst we work. And then when we come to do the colouring, we're going to be using our pergolina pencils. But we'll get to those... Um, when we, got, blah, 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 when we start to do the colouring. <laughs> okay. So I think we're, we're all good to go, don't you? Is everyone ready? Everyone to chill out for the next 45 minutes or so? Um, it, it's so nice when I see all the regular names popping up each week and also when we have new people joining us as well. Um, it's great to have everybody's company. And as we've said in the past, there's a full library of tutorials on the Clarity Stamp YouTube page, whether it be for Groovy, whether it be Groovy Tuesday, The Shack, 
the moments of clarity. Then back in the day, there used to be YouTube Tuesday that Barbara always used to do with the brayer, the jelly plate, inks, paints. Um, so there's lots and lots. You could literally lose a whole week just going through all the different tutorials and videos on our YouTube page. So, um, and as I say, if you belong to Groovy Worldwide, you can always ask the question there because uh, the design team are always on hand to, to help out with any questions. Right, I think I've waffled enough. I shall have another slurp of coffee. It's not so hot. I don't think I boiled the kettle. But it's wet and it's warm, so it will do. Right, should we get going then? So what we're going to do, we're going to work on the soft side of the black mat. We're working on the back of our parchment. And what we're going to do, we're going to go over and add some more white work to our lily of the valley and the shading on our leaves and rows. Okay. And for me, one of the key things is the groovy guard because one, it allows me to focus on the areas and two, my hands are really warm in here. So it's helping me to protect the parchment because the heat from your hands can cause the parchment to curl. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer and then I'll readjust the artwork so we're central. I reckon that's close enough. Woo. Let's have a look. So if we bring that into okay, the center. And then if I bring my hands in, I just want to make sure it doesn't go out of focus. Like, there we go. And I'm just going to wheel my chair in. Okay. So I'm going to use the um, number three tool from the starter kit. It's got a number three on it, which has a, a larger ball on the end. I'm going to put my glasses on. I tend to be using my glasses more for parchment these days. And then all I'm going to do is just gently stroke the parchment in a downward method. So I'm starting at the top and I'm just bringing it towards me. Now we can see instantly there's definitely a difference in the brightness of the white between this one and that one. Let me turn that over for you so you can see it from the front. There we go. You can definitely see. And that's because this one has been resting, this piece of artwork, for a week. Okay. So let's turn it back over. And you'll notice there's a little black dot there. So I'm just going to try and fill that in. There we go. Now, some people prefer to stroke towards them. Some people prefer to stroke away from them. What way do you do your white work? Do you go away or towards? Come on, let's have a little, let's have a little um, survey. Away or towards? Okay, so on this one, I'm coming towards, just like so. There we go. Now, this, these little um, lily of the valley, these have been done the outline's been traced with the number one tool. Okay. Okay, so we've got both, 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 towards, towards, towards. See? And I bet we all get the same result, don't we? It's what we feel more comfortable doing. So we're just going to do this one. And then gently does it. Now, and also, I don't know if you, you'll find this yourself, is that where, because I've traced out with the number one tool in these areas, as I get closer to that line, I can feel a little bit more weakness in the parchment. Okay. So you just need to be a little bit more careful if you're going to go with the number one tool and you're doing the, the white work like so. Okay. So let's move over to this area here. Now, these ones have been traced out with the number two tool. We see the difference between the outlines on the, the two different um, lilies of the valleys. So we're just going to 
come down like so. There we go. And the same on these ones. And then we're just going to continue to add our white work. See, it's, it's interesting, isn't it, seeing people's um, responses. Um, <laughs> I've just seen Ken's response. Whichever technique you use, it will be all white on the night. Very good, Ken. I like that one. Oh, dear. That's just what a lovely smile on my face. Thank you, Ken. Well, I wasn't smiling beforehand, but... Um... <laughs> okay. So let's turn these ones over now. And let's have a look at the, the difference. So these ones here have the traced out to number one. These ones have been traced out to number two. Okay. So let's move down to the bottom section. Okay, so now this time, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go from away from me. So I'm going to go from the bottom and go upwards on these ones just to see whether I get a, a different result. Yeah, I think it, as many of you have said, it depends what you're doing, um, what your white work in, whether you go forward, backwards, or use both. But for me on these little areas, see, it, I definitely prefer coming towards me. I think I've got a little bit more control on these particular little flowers. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So let's turn this over and let's have a look at where we are at the moment. Okay, there we go, let's move that over. Mm, not so bad. These ones are definitely better, believe it or not. I, well, I think they're better than these ones. But it's not over yet. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go in and whiten up these areas here on the rose petals. So working from the back again, groovy guard. And this time I'm going to go away. So I'm going to go back over yeah, and I'm still using the number three tool. Okay. So on this particular part of the design, I think I've got more control going away from myself. Okay. So then I'm going to turn my work like so. And I'm pushing away again. I don't want to go right into the middle. And I'm just gently curving around on this one. Now, when I'm saying I'm sort of stroking away, if you're new to white work, basically, if my finger here is the parchment, what I'm doing, say, see this line in my finger, okay? I'm starting with the line of the design and then I'm pushing, and then as I push away, I'm lifting away, whether it be like a sort of striking a match or an aeroplane taking off, okay? And what that does, it concentrates the white area here, and then it gives you that softer feathered look as you get towards the middle, which is what I'm after. And that's what Barb was doing um, on Sunday on TV in the coloring shows. It was, remember, it was half, um, no, it was three quarters, half, and then a quarter with the three different shades of um, colour. So we're going to go around now. So let's turn this over and see what we've got. So we can definitely see now these are a lot whiter 
than the ones that we've only put one coat on. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so let's finish off our rose petals. Yeah. So we're going to do these ones first, like so. And you know what? I'm actually going to, let's try these ones. No. See, I've definitely got, on these ones, I've definitely got more control going away from me. Isn't that funny? But I think, as I say, many of you said, it all depends on the area in which you're working. Okay. So let's move down to the final petal on the rose. And just... Put some whiteness there, and I'm going to turn it around, and put some whiteness there, okay. And also, I think it was last week, or it might have been the week before, I'm sure Jane will remind me, about sometimes putting a base coat down, if you're new to white work, putting a base coat down first, like an undercoat, and then if you wanted to, you could put the white pencil over the top. Okay, so now I've gone to the number four tool, which is a slightly bigger ball tool, and we're just gonna go back over where we've added some shading to the edge of the leaves. Okay, not too much, just a little bit. So turn it around. Bring your work to you. Don't sort of try and turn your hand and get all twisted and uncomfortable. Okay. There we go, so that's that one. So let's go back and have a look at this leaf here. But I think when you look at something like this, I think it's, it's really nice that something so small but so indelicate it, it's a great way for practicing the various different skills. And as I've said previously, if you're brand new to, to Groovy, you don't even have to be going on this part of the bus journey. Because just by tracing out the line art, you automatically get a beautiful piece of artwork. Okay. So... Can we see the difference? Yeah, we can definitely see the difference, can't we? Where we've added some additional layers compared to these two over here. Okay. So let's just put a little bit around the edges here. And I'm just pressing very, very gently. Not going on too heavy. And it's, it's, if you go, when you're doing the white work, if you find that when you're doing it, you don't think that you're getting anything, you'll be surprised at how the parchment is stretching. And definitely, I mean, I know I've left it a week because obviously we're only here on a weekly basis, but it definitely does make a difference by letting the, the parchment relax for a period of time. Okay. Right, so I reckon that's all the white work I want to do. Okay, let's have a look from the front, shall we? Does yours look anything like that? I'm sure it does. There we go. I'm, I'm in really close, and it look, I mean, it's not great, but it's not ungreat, if that sort of makes sense because what we're going to do now is look at introducing some colour. And I just want to show you a few things with sort of like the, the blending of those colours. So in order to do that, we need to work on the hard side of our mat. Okay. And what I want to do first is, I, this is my practice piece of parchment. Remember we've been trying all the, the different bits on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace out part of the rose. Okay, I'm going to do it twice. 
So let me just take a groovy tab, like so. I'm just going to give it a wipe with my tumble dry sheet. And it doesn't take long to trace out, okay? So if I trace out just the, the rose itself, okay, add in all that. And I'm just doing this for ease with the, the number one tool. But sometimes if you're unsure of color, um, you may want to sort of practice first and see what you come up with. But if you don't have time to, to practice, then the beauty of using the Pergolina pencils is that if you don't like what you've done or you've made a mistake, then you can rub it all out. Okay, so let's just do, so I'm just going to do one rose. I know I said I was going to do two. I'm just going to do one because I can do exactly that. I can show you um, and, um, and then I can rub it out, can't I? Okay. I've just seen Ken. Ken sort of keeps losing the signal where he is. Um, so, right, I reckon that's all we need. Let's just put the stalks in so it just looks a bit more like a rose. Okay. Right. So here we have my rose head. This could be any flower you choose. So I'm going to go for the Pergolina B pencils. Okay. And I've got mine in my bag. So I tell you what, let me take all of them out and it would be so much more easier. So when it comes to the Pergolina B pencils, let me zoom out a little bit now. Let's go that way. Okay. So when it comes to the B pencils, all of the B pencils have got white writing on them and they say B in front of the numbers. Okay. And you've got 16 lovely colors in the B pencils. Okay. And what's great, there are wax based pencils. So they are, um, there are wax based pencils, so they're like the, the polychromos. But this is, these are a great way to introduce in color not only on parchment, but general coloring in as well. Okay. And you can blend the colors and you can blend the colors really easily, okay? When I first started using parchment craft, um, wasn't aware of the perga liners, wasn't aware of the perga colors. And we used to use the Tim Holtz distress markers. They're a water-based pen or the polychromos, Faber-Castell polychromos. And I automatically thought that when I was coloring in, I had to go on heavy and I had to go on solid to get the brightness of the color to come through um, the parchment, okay? But you don't, because as I've learned over the years by watching Barbara, Linda Williams, Josie, Glynis, Jane, all the, the other um, fantastic design team is that you, you pick up little bits and pieces and different ways of doing it. And then when you look at it, you think, wow, okay, let's give it a go. So this is what we're gonna do with the rose here. Okay, now you'll notice that there's no pink within the B pencils, but we do have a lovely red and we also have a white. So red and white make pink, okay. If I take those two pencils, and let me see, I also like taking, I mean, there's a lovely orange here, but I like a, a darker, richer orange. So in order to get a darker, richer orange, then I'm gonna use the red and the yellow. Okay, so let's just pop those to one side. So we're gonna need a couple of pencils, and I'm just gonna show you a couple of things then we are also going to need, um, I'm gonna use my mix mat. I'm gonna use some dorso oil, okay. 
Okay, like so. I need a spot on sponge. And I also need some blending nibs. Okay, which I happen to have just here. Now the blending pens are imminent. Okay, Mr. Dave's work, that's his baby and he's working on that at the moment. So they're very, very soon. Okay. So here's some color I've got on my blending mat previously. Now I've got it on my oil mat, so I'm guessing these are the oil-based pencils. Okay. So let's have a look. Let's pop our work to one side. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put... I always say a tiny drop, but it all comes always comes out quicker than what it should. Right, okay, it's not too bad. Okay, so a tiny drop on there. Let's play it safe. And scribble out some red over here. Okay, like so. And then some white over here. So I've got choices. I can use my mix mat to create my pink first, or let me put that to one side for a moment, or I can go with white. Now what I'm doing is I'm very lightly scribbling the white pencil. Okay, if I hold this up, you can see it's just like scribbled. The difference between scribbling lightly and going on heavy is the brightness in the color. Okay, so if I take, I'm gonna put a little bit of dorso oil on my sponge. I wanna show you the two different ways that you can do this. Okay, all right, let's take a, a clean nib. So let's do a piece on the parchment first. Okay. Too much dorsal oil on the nib will take the color off completely, just like the eraser pencil. So it's a quick little dab and then just blot it on the sponge. Now if I go on here, I don't know if you can see there's a lot of oil already on there. So let's see what happens. If I now put my glasses back on. <laughs> oh dear. So if I now start to work in a circular motion, what we're doing now is we're blending. See how we're taking the graininess of the scribble and we're softening down the white. Okay, just like so. There we go. So what I have now is like an undercoat of whiteness. If I take a tiny little bit of red, like so, just scribbled on, and I reckon I need to pick up a little bit more oil. And I start now to... to I'm just working in circular motions, like so. There we go. So I now have, let me put a, a white piece of paper underneath. So I've now got, it's not red, but it's still not pink. Okay, so I'm just gonna carry on working that. Let me show you, just in comparison, the red on its own. So you can see that there's definitely a difference. Okay, so red, pink. Now if I want to make that more pink, then what I can do is go back on very lightly with the white. Okay, 
I'm going to take a clean nib because I've just used it on the red. Okay. And then this time, what I'm going to do, I'm going to try dry blending. So I haven't put any oil on the nib at all. But I think I need a tiny little bit just to help it move. There we go. So now we can start to lighten up the red. But it's definitely better, I find, um, by putting the white down first, if you're going direct onto the parchment, and then blending that first, and then introducing a tiny bit of red. Now let's have a look what happens if I bring in my blending mat, pick up a little bit of the red from here, a little bit of the oil, and mix it in with the white. A little bit more. So now, let's pop that underneath. It's a very, very soft pink. Okay. I can pick up some more red and darken it if I wanted to. Okay. And now what I can do is I can now go in and color with what I've mixed up on the mix mat. What's Jay say? Jay said you can get a really nice pink using the white pencil and the B14. Is the B14 like that burgundy color? Let's have a look. Where's my B14? Using B11. Come on, number 14, where are you? 10. Ah, B14. Ah, right, so it's a lighter, purpley color. Okay, should we give that a go then? So let's, let's go on here. Okay, no, what are you doing? So let's, all right, let's go in this one. So we're gonna put the white down first. Another clean nib. Let's see what this gives us. A little bit of dorso. Blend in the white. Like so. I need a little bit more white. There's too much oil on there. Can you see? I mean, I've got some whiteness down. Okay. So, there we go. Just blend that down. You can definitely see there's white there. Can't, yeah, you can. Okay. And then a tiny little bit of purple. Maybe too much. Let's have a look. Oh, yes. So you get a lovely, lovely cerise pink. Oh, I like that. See, and you can add it as well. So you can build up the depth of color. Oh, that's a very nice pink. It's a brighter pink, isn't it? Mmm. Yeah. Thank you for that, Jane. I like that. That's really nice. Purple and yeah, that makes sense, really, doesn't it? Now, there is a lovely burgundy color, the B13. Should we give that one a go? Okay, so let's do a little bit of white. So I'm not pressing hard with the pencil, I'm just pressing very gently because if you press too hard with the B pencils, it creates like a what like a seal and it makes it harder then to try and blend the colors together so it definitely need a bit more white on there okay see it's amazing what a, a little bit of i say a little bit of white by using the white what you can do with the the other colors okay so let's try a little bit of this burgundy color Maybe a bit too much. Let's have a go. A little bit more royal. Oh, this gives a nice colour as well. 
So maybe you want to experiment with the, the colors that you've got and see what colors you can come up with. I mean, obviously white will always lighten um, your colors. <laughs> just read you. Of course, Jane knows her pinks, definitely. Okay. How are we doing? Wow, quarter two already. Okay, so let's pop that onto there. So yeah, so it's a little bit more of a, a richer pink, isn't it? Sort of richer is the right word. So this is using the red. That's using the burgundy, which is the B13. And this one's using the B14. Let me lift it up a little. It's easier for me to quickly lift rather than... Okay. So if I turn that over now... I know it's on white, but it's just to give you the idea. I wonder if I pop a bit of color paper underneath. Yeah, you can definitely see the different shades, can't you? On there. Okay. But as we were talking about earlier, if you decide when you're practicing or when if you go directly onto your work, see, I think I'm going to go with the um, the burgundy and the white, okay, for my rows. So when you look at this, if you think, right, okay, well, I've made a mistake, I don't like it, um, or I've gone on too dark, or I've gone on too heavy, then this is where the double-ended erasers come into play. So say, for example, you've gone on slightly too heavy in one of the areas. Using the pink eraser, very lightly, we'll just sort of take it back a little bit, okay? But if you decide, no, definitely don't like it at all, then the white end will take it away completely, okay? And then I just need a brush just to get rid of the dust, because I don't want to blow. So now we've taken that back to clear parchment. So for me, if you're learning the coloring technique, this is where the pencils are key, because if you make a mistake, you can rub it out, okay? So let me just get rid of that little bit down there, what I also want to show you is how to make a lovely, my favorite, um, there's a piece of artwork here. Where is it? Well, there's a couple of pieces. But you see how you've got that lovely orange and the red and the darkness on there. And it's very easy to do. Okay. So instead of putting the white down as your base color, what we're going to do is we're going to put the yellow down. So it's the same principle, light scribbles, Clean nib, a little bit of dorsal oil, blend the yellow in, okay, so a little bit too much oil, okay, but you can see you've got that lovely bright yellow, okay, just like so. And then what I'm gonna do, it's tiny little bits of red, because the red is the more dominant um, color. So I'm just gonna put some little flicks of red just at the base, and then I'm just gonna put like a very faint line just underneath the top, okay? Then what I'm gonna do, you know how we was doing the white work where I'm flicking away, so I'm just Flicking away from the bottom. Okay. And then from the top, I'm just going to gently feather that color out. Gently does it. I'm not applying any pressure on the parchment. Okay. Look, I'm going to go over the edge here because I can tidy it up slightly. And then I'm just going to gently work my way down and then on this one I'm going to work my way up. 
Okay, and now I'm going to go over the whole area. So I've broken down the, the dominant colour first. I'm going to take my eraser, wherever that's gone, and just clear up that edge where I've overlapped. Now if I turn that over, you can start to see now how I've got a lovely blend of colour. Can you see that okay? I'll bring it up a little bit closer. So there's no sort of real harsh lines of where I've sort of brought the two colours together. It's giving it that natural soft look to it. If I pop a piece of coloured parchment under paper underneath, you can yeah, you can see that, can't you? So then working on the back still. I'm still going to carry on just gently, gently breaking that down. And if you find that it is too red, then you can either use the pink part of um, the eraser to take some off. See, that's what I would do. Rather than risk it with more dorsal oil to lift it, I would definitely use the, the pink eraser. Okay, so now when we turn it over, we can start to see how we're starting to get that colour. And then to really sort of make it jump, this is the only time that I would really go on the front of the parchment. Okay, and for that, what we need is a really, really sharp pencil. So let's just have a look. So I've got the red. Okay, I've sharpened it to a point using my Faber Castell. And then glasses on. And then just very gentle in between the white lines. Just like we do with the, the white work. Just some little flicks just to intensify it. Now where's that pink rubber? And then if you think, oh no, just gently sort of take it back. Okay. And maybe we'll do the same with the yellow. On the front as well. Just to soften up that harshness of the the red or the brightness of the red. Okay. There we go. So you can see the difference now how we've sort of added some colour both on the front and the back. Now I think for my one, for my um, rose that I'm going to colour in, um, which we're going to colour in next week, is I'm going to go with that lovely burgundy colour, which is B13 together with the, the B1, okay. Um, and we'll see what it looks like. I may next week decide that as I start to do it, that I like it, but then as I start to complete my rows, I might think, well, you know what, it's a little bit too dark. Um, I can get rid of it again, okay. So, I can't believe where the time has gone today. That coffee is definitely cold now. Ooh, okay. So what else have I got to tell you? Um, what's going on this? Oh, <laughs> that was really cold. I shouldn't have drunk that. Okay. So I had a look at the designs from Jazz, didn't we, that Barb had on TV on Sunday. And um, so those were those. Tina is on TV on Thursday on the Pergamano show at 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. And she's got some fantastic pieces of artwork um, that she's going to showcase over the two hours. Um, existing designs um, that she'll be showcasing. So, you know, we've got the flat kiss flowers from Tina. She's going to be doing the groovy versions by Tina. Um, so we've got those on TV on Thursday. Um, we've still got spaces available for our open days. It's a month away, um, Friday the 9th or Saturday the 10th of June. 
So tickets are um, available on our website. Then what else have we got? Um, we've got Barb's blog. We've got the Clarity Matters blog. And also we currently have our coronation event on the website. So if you place an order between, it was from Friday of last week up until midnight tonight, all orders placed during that period will go into a royally golden um, drawer um, where the winner will be chosen at random to win a hundred pound clarity gift voucher. So it doesn't matter how many times you purchase, what the value of the order is, they'll all go in um, for a lucky draw um, with the opportunity to win a hundred pound clarity gift voucher. Um, if you're, when you, um, if you're a club member and you sign into your account and your basket comes to 30 pounds or more after your club discount, you'll automatically get a 23% discount. 2023 being the year, 23% discount. However, there's a few items that are not included in the event, um, like club membership, gift vouchers, tickets for um, retreats and open days, and also stuff that's recently been released on TV. So there's new stuff that, teen, um, that Barbara had to, on TV on Sunday and from the week before, those um, lovely easy layout stencils, um, they aren't included. But as you go through the checkout, it will sort of tell you once your basket gets to that point. And if you've got any questions or you're not sure, then you can always give Janine or Sue in the office a call um, on the main number if you're unsure. And um, Barb is, as far as I know, I think Barb is back in the shack on Monday. Um, but just keep an eye on your emails over the next coming days to, um, for confirmation of that. Otherwise, Dean is on TV on Thursday. I'll be back with you on Tuesday. And I think the conversation we had when we were driving back from TV is that um, the shack will be back on Monday. But I'll double check that with Barb when I speak to her later. So um, thank you once again. I hope you've learned something. I know for me, trying to sort of cram in as much information as possible, but you know what? We can carry on, can't we? I haven't got guests, I haven't got time limits. We can go on as long as possible with this really. Um, but um, I know you, you've all got lots of things to be getting on with. So thank you for joining me once again. Welcome as always, to the lovely newbies. I hope you come back. I hope you've learned something. Um, but don't forget, we've got the Clarity and Groovy Worldwide um, Facebook pages. Um, design team are always in there to answer any questions. Um, yeah, so um, so we shall see. What will we see? I don't know what we'll see. We'll see Tina on TV on Thursday. Thank you for the design team in the room and for Stuart for your help. And um, I'll see you next week. Take care now. Bye-bye.